Hi there, in this video we're going to be looking at how you can import messages that have been sent to you by another bulletin board system into your Mystic BBS. And you'll recall in the previous videos we've been polling the FSXNet hub and uh, receiving some message packets which we now need to import into Mystic. We also got some files but that's going to be the subject of another video. Uh, but these are just purely message packets that could contain echo mail, which are public messages that are shared between various message boards across different bulletin boards. Or it could be net mail, which is a private message that could be addressed directly to you. And that's the subject of a different video. So to start with, I just want to show you into the uh, Mystic directory and a couple of things to point out to you. The first is that I've added copies of the old PKZip and unzip executables into the directory just so that Mystic's got those to unzip and uh, zip files if we need to. That's something I suggest you do um, and it can catch people out sometimes if they don't have that in there. The other thing I've done is I've added another any file that we'll be using with Mutil, the Mystic Utilities program. Remember we have these different any files that we can set up for different functions so I've created a separate one called mail in. And now I just want to take you through that and show you what's in it. So to start with, I've trimmed everything out except what we need. So this particular one is all about how to um, import um, echo mail into the system. So the import echo mail function is set to true. The logging side of things is the same as the previous any file. So I've kept all of the settings the same for logging. And then down in the import echo mail stanza, I've enabled a number of functions. Now the first thing to explain is the idea of duplicate messages or dupes. So what happens is um, a publicly posted message on a bulletin board somewhere can pass between a number of systems before it ends up at yours. And if you're connected to a number of bulletin boards it's quite possible that you'll end up getting the same message sent to you twice because it's come through different paths, different routes. Obviously you only want to import the message once. Mystic is smart, it will recognize that it's seen the message before and it can do a couple of things. Firstly, it will drop the message and not import it and you may never see that message again or know about it. Or if you do want to see the messages that it's detected as duplicates, what you do is you set up a dedicated message board, which I just call dupes, and then you point to it using the settings in this any file here, in this, this section of the, uh, the any file. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm saying the duplicate message um, board, or the index number for that board, is number 5. So I want Mystic to retain copies of these duplicate messages, just because I'm curious. Now, if I open up the Mystic config program and show you what I've done, I'll go into editors, into message base editor, and you'll see now that I've created a fifth message base, which is a local base. So it's, and that's important. It must be local if you want to use this feature. And I've just called it dupes. Now see how down the left-hand side it says ID 5? Well, that links back to this bit here. Dupe message index equals 5. The other thing is the next setting, which simply tells you how um, big the database should be. Um, that it retains uh, while it's tracking all of these duplicates. So at the moment I've, I've wound it right up to around 240,000 messages. <clears throat> now back on the message base side of things and the configuration, if I press enter, I'll show you what I set. So I have a name that I just call dupes. I set an echo tag dupes as well, which I'm not sure if that's needed to be honest. Um, the file name I've just called dupes, so you know the, what the, uh, the actual file is on the hard drive. And in the access strings, I've put in a little percent sign. Now what that does under the list access is that means not, never. And uh, in other words, you won't actually see the dupe space displayed if you're logged in and looking at it as a, uh, a member of the bulletin board. If you do want to actually look at the dupe space and see what's inside it, then you'd change that to maybe S255, maybe give it a group number. But if you just want to uh, tuck it away out of sight, then just put that little percent sign in. That's my top tip for you for today. The base type is local, and that's really important. Um, and I think I've also just gone with the default max messages and max message age here. Again, look up at this section here. You can see it says ID 5. Um, and that's just important that you, you uh, use the correct ID number in the any file. 
So with that done, that's those two sections of the import echo mail. The next one is to talk about whether packets that are coming to your bulletin board from what's known as unsecure systems um, are going to be tossed into your um, message bases when it runs this. Now an unsecure system is really one that you haven't set up as a, as a known echo node. And if we look in the uh, mystic directory and we go into echo mail in, firstly here are some packets that have arrived from a system that we know which was the FSX hub. And um, you know when I ran Fido poll they, they landed here because we knew this system existed. But if we had a system connect to us that we didn't know or hadn't defined any sort of credentials with, they would land in this in unsecure directory. Now it is up to you whether you set the figure here to um, true or false, but um, that will determine whether or not Mystic's going to in, um, ingest those messages. I think as a rule this applies to echo mail, the public messages, but if it's net mail, which is the private message, um, even if it landed in insecure, I think uh, Mystic would ingest it into your bulletin board because you need to be able to receive mail. Strip scene buys. If you are looking at messages in Mystic, and I'll show you this once we run the process, you can also look at these kludge files, uh, sorry, um, they're like kludge names, and um, examples of them are scene by lines. So as messages pass between various bulletin boards, each bulletin board stamps it with its, it's been seen by me kind of uh, message. And these scene by lines are not normally visible, but the, the uh, mail tosser, Mutil, uses it as a way to determine whether or not it might be a duplicate, whether it's something that your board has already seen and somehow it's ended up back at you again. I would suggest you leave this as false. It used to be that you'd strip them because of the lack of hard drive space back in the 80s and 90s. It was a way of saving file space on uh, small hard drives, but these days uh, I wouldn't bother. The next settings are around um, remapping netmail from one username to another. So for argument's sake, if somebody sent you a netmail address to SISOP, Mystic would understand that that needs to be readdressed to Red72, which is our SISOP. Likewise, if somebody addressed something to System Operator, it would be remapped to Red72. That's kind of useful to, to put in place, and that's for netmail, which is the subject of another video. But just think netmail is kind of like private email except between bulletin boards. And here is a section about twit filtering. So the idea here is that if you want to, you can define by uncommenting these things um, a number of different twit um, variables, I suppose. So if you never wanted to receive anything from this fellow um, and you'd spelt this out like this, then uh, when this stuff arrived from this particular chap, it would never be imported into your bulletin board. I personally don't run these. I usually prefer to see everything coming in and I just use the next key to step through rubbish that I don't want to read. Next is a really cool feature and that's about how Mystic can create message bases automatically when it receives echo mail from a system and that echo mail has an, an, an echo tag that you don't currently have set up. And so what it will do is it will automatically create the bases. So I've set this to true and the file names that it creates that store the data files are lowercase. You can set up the security settings for just listing the base, reading it, posting to it, and SISOP. So I've just set it to S255, so you've got to be a system admin initially to see these, but you can always go back into the message base editor and change those settings. And I've just gone with the default values for the maximum number of messages and the maximum um, age. 365 days. Plus you can see you can also set other values as well for whether the message base should be real name, whether it's part of a new scan for messages and so on. And the last thing I want to show you down here is a cool way of actually specifying settings specific to a certain node address that you have. So at the moment our demo system has got the address 211999 and so if a new message base arrived uh, echo mail arrived for a message base that you didn't have set up on your system and it was addressed to this then we know that that's part of um, FSX net because it's zone 21 and we also know that we've assigned group 1 in our uh, message groups for FSX net. So here you see I'm applying the same kind of default 255 SISOP only settings but I've also added group 1 
and because this particular message net doesn't necessarily need you to use your real name I've set use real names to zero which means false. This is a cool feature. Okay so now we've done all that I am going to minimize that and bring up a DOS prompt or a command prompt. Feels a bit antiquated to say DOS doesn't it? And if I go Fido poll, remember that's our program that we use to poll the hub and press enter. There's a bunch of commands you'll remember. I'm going to just poll the hub again and we'll see if we can get anything from it. So Fido poll 21 1 forward slash 100 go and yep it's received you can see a, another message packet or a compressed file full of packets. Now we're going to run I'll clear the screen mutil mail in. Here we go fingers crossed and magic is happening look at that. Wow okay so now we've imported echo mail and 103 messages have just landed in the bulletin board in a blink of an eye and if I just go back to the um, file manager and go into the logs this is always good to look at so let's look at our mutel log and if I just scroll down a little bit you can see what's going on so it's running the import echo mail process it's uh, looking at the directory it's extracting from the compressed file a whole bunch of packets and the first one it's found is this one and it's from the hub 211100 it's addressed to our system 211999 it's got the echo area tag for fsx underscore gen which is the message base we set up and it's importing message number one and on and on it goes it's just working its way through boom 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 all 103 messages and all the various compressed files until we get to the end where it shuts down it says all good I've done it in 2.61 seconds 103 messages thank you very much thanks for coming have a good day so shall we log in and have a look just see what that looks like I'll fire up a copy of the bulletin board local login I'm red72 and my password's 1234 don't tell anyone will you press enter um, I'm a system operator so it's asking me if I want to log in secretly or not I'll just say no and I'm straight into the main menu because that's how I configured things for this demo if I go M for the message menu um, and I'll go J to join a group just because I can I'm going into group 1 which is FSXnet and if I go area change you can see I'm only seeing that one message base which was general chat and I can R for read, N for new and wow look at them all here they are I can page down and look through all these 103 messages page up if I press enter on one of them I can start reading them using the up and down arrows keys or I can use the right arrow key to step forward the left arrow key to step back now let me show you a, um, that, those clutch lines I was talking about so here's another little sneaky tip for you if you press the V key from this view then you'll see look at that all of those clutch lines miraculously appear and you can see kind of some of the behind the scenes stuff that gets um, carried with each of the messages so in this case I can see that Guru was writing to yours truly Paul and it was from a Mystic BBS system Alpha 17 and it's a reply to a message that a correspondence he and I have been having you can see the UTC time zone setting you can see all the various nodes that are a part of FSXNet that have seen this message and you can also see the path that the message has traveled from so it's gone from Guru's node 211108 through the hub 211100 and then it's arrived here at our bulletin board 211999 press V to hide that again but you can just look at that whenever you want and you can also when you reply you can quote that sort of uh, stuff if you need to as well so that is how you import echo mail and I think I will stop the video now and next time we'll be having a look probably at net mail I think because I think that's really important that we cover that one before we do much else and then maybe we'll get on to files so hey thanks for watching please subscribe and as always any comments are welcome if you want to know more about anything that you see in these videos uh, drop me a line, there's some contact details on this channel. Bye for now.